Purchase new wiper blades from O'Reilly Auto Parts today and we'll install them for free. See better and drive safer with O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Go for get over here. All right, sorry, that's my dog. Hi, it's Spike. I'm in my backyard. And I want to remind you, our very first T-shirt, our very first Spike's car radio t-shirt is uh still for sale only for a few more days then it is gone forever you will never see it again um it's to commemorate our first 100 shows and the folks at blip shift uh they're my favorite t-shirt uh, manufacturer when it comes to automotive themed products um i've loved their stuff from afar and uh you know what we picked them to do our first shirt, so check it out. It's an old uh, Blau Punk radio with uh, Spike on the little push buttons and Zuckerman where the Blau Punk was. It's an awesome shirt. You can buy it at blipshift.com forward slash Spike or just go to blipshift.com and uh, search our store. We have a store there, and guess what? There's only one shirt for sale, and it's only for sale for a few more days. They're, uh, they're 20 bucks. And uh, you can represent Spike's Car Radio wherever you may be in the world, my friends. Thank you, and uh, enjoy the show. Now, Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio, a downloadable cars and coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Welcome to Spike's Car Radio here in Beverly Hills. That's Zuckerman blowing his nose. I need a tissue before we start, Spike. I need a, I need a tissue. Give me that. Yeah, I got for chucking off. I got the phlegm today. I've got the phlegm. We both have the phlegm, my friend. What's up? You look all worked up. What's I happening? Don't know. Huh? Look, he's working on his phone. He's looking down. It's all bad news. It's all, but you're here now. I'm here. I'm you're here. You're the one making a big deal. No, but I'm saying I just got a face. I just got to look on my face. You're here. Yes. In a safe place with your friends. This is safe? This with is, what you're doing to me? We're with our crew. We're with our friends. They're listening right you're now. Making public, you're making public <laughs> my misery. <laughs> Just keep to your side of the table. Look, I have a miserable life, too. You have. Most of our listeners are miserable, but this little hour is sacred now. That's I'm what I'm planning you, on getting into. I didn't in, intend to like, talk about my misery. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, you're missing what I'm saying. I hear what you're, you're saying. You're in a safe place now with us. Oh, we're going to wrap safe? our arms around you. Just don't wrap your penis around me, <laughs> Mr. Chucker, because I don't want your other kind of phlegm. The stuff they call the phlegm from down below. Hi, everybody. It's, uh, it's Spike's Car Radio. This is Spike. We've left a seat open for you, the listener. This is your mobile cars and coffee. Today we have uh, our guest and an old friend, uh, Barry Martyr, who's going to be coming on to promote Letters from Nut. Uh, we got Zuckerman back. I know you uh, babies have been screaming for him. Here he is. I hope you enjoy him. He's only seven minutes late. <laughs> we, <clears throat> we're going to talk cars for a little while. Yes. Then we'll bring Barry in. Yes. It's good. It's going to be good, right? I love this is cars. Already, right. And I love Barry. I was stressed this morning, too. Have you met Barry? Yeah, I did meet Barry. He doesn't like roast beef, remember? Oh, that's, that's right. What, that was right. the one and only conversation I had. And you have an employee like Barry named Mazza, right? And he's unbelievable. <laughs> Mazza really should just come on the show to tell Mazza stories. It's completely off point, but it's in highly entertaining. <laughs> I would love to have Jerry and Barry next to each other and you and Mazza. And we'll, we'll, we'll load up five mics and I just let it go. That would be really fun. Do you know? <laughs> like bring bring your guy to, to work day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Schmucks at the table. He's our like second in a duel. All right. Look, look. Um, a couple things I want to catch up the audience on, and and we got to go quick because we don't have a lot of time. One, um, the guys from Lotus brought the Evora 400 out mm -hmm. for us to drive in yes. Malibu just this past weekend. What did you think? I I love these cars. I love. What, what did you think? I absolutely loved the car. <clears throat> That's not saying that I would buy it, but I absolutely no, I would. Uh, well, it's yeah. hard for us to actually buy things because we have so many things already. Right. But 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 as far as a guy who knows cars, what did you think? One of the greatest Canyon Carver track cars right. of all time. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, and in beautiful colors. There was a beautiful yellow one and a red one. And then um, uh, uh, the, the guy who came, I'm going to look up his name. I forget his name. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You're two Englishmen. To, it was two to Englishmen. This. Okay. Just make a note to, to take out that little part. Mark. Rob Mark. from England, from Lotus, Rob came out. 
and started showing us uh, the M&M colors you can get these cars in, and they were spectacular. He bought two really nice colors. At night, it looked really great in red, and but it looked great in yellow. did you see all the special edition colors yes. they did? Yes. So these cars, you know, the, 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 the car I thought of immediately, there were two cars. One was that little Alfa Romeo. 4C, yes. Right. Far and superior. Far superior, right? No doubt. No doubt. Now, is that the same price point as the 4C? No, I don't start think so. at 93, I, or is that cheaper? Th- the 4C, I think, is a lot cheaper, but I'm not going to swear to it. Well, I would rather have this. I, I, would, I would agree with say, you. Because this feels like it's, it's, it's better put together, and you're not going to have trouble with and it. And I have heard some things about the handling characteristics of the Alpha that, that seem to belie the fact that it's a mid-engine car. In other words, it does not handle so neutrally, from what I've heard. And he, did you know this car has the uh, Camry engine in it? I know, and all of the internals. <laughs> and all the internals. I kind of like that. 24-valve V6, aluminum block, 400 horsepower, 302 foot-pounds of torque, all geared towards a fun driving experience. Now, the other car I felt a little bit in there was the McLaren. Without yes. the power, That's still 400 true. horsepower. I just thought this car was very much like, an, a, you know, this is a nice Cayman alternative. I right? would say to you... Yes, but well, more expensive, I believe. But I will say to you this: they make a sales point of it having a Camry engine without the internals being touched. It's dependable that way. It's the external bolt-ons that give it the 400 horsepower. It is their uh, their cooled supercharger. I forget what they refer to that thing as. It was uh, their supercharger unit. Their gearing allows it to get the 400 horsepower. It did. Not quite <clears throat> feel like 400 horsepower to me. Did you Did you feel that? Well, thing? I didn't get to open it up. I liked when I turned on the muffler <clears throat> and made yeah. some noise, the exhaust, I mean. Um, and, you know, I, I wasn't going nuts. They had one, they had the manual, and then they had the automatic. Which one did you drive? I drove both. I drove the automatic, and I'm told the manual is, is the more engaging application. Yeah, that's the one that you want, in right. my opinion, right? Right. If I you're going to have a little driving car, you want to be moving through gears. But, I, but you know, interestingly enough, I drove the GT3 Touring out to Malibu that day, and I liked the balance of horsepower to gearbox in the Lotus more than the GT3 Touring. Do you know I, what I'm saying? That's, I feel like this. my shifting in the GT3 Touring is only slowing the car down a little bit, I sometimes, agree. right? And that was the thing about it. When I say it didn't feel like quite 400 horsepower, it's not to say that it it, it didn't feel, oh, you're right, it didn't feel overly powerful for the chassis and the gearing. It felt a nice combination of all of the elements. Right. And yeah. it and handles unbelievably well. And it was a lot of fun. I was Absolutely. really, su- really uh, surprised by okay. that. All right. Wanna... But another problem. What? What do you got? Okay. The rear visibility, I don't care that there's a camera I can see out the back. I find it very disconcerting to pull out of a parking slot into into a very busy parking lot, not being able to see over my right or left and merely having to depend right, upon the right. camera, which does not have the peripheral vision of my eyeballs. Well, I just got out of that Lamborghini Urus. The, uh, <laughs> urine. <laughs> urine. I have a urus infection here. There's something we can do about that. Urus. <laughs> I'm passing a strone through my urus. Um so I, you know, I don't know. I find myself liking that more and more because it tells me I'm in a special car, I, I that I don't have all that visibility. And I really liked it that it was saying I'm a sports car and you can barely see out the well, back. I, felt I, like I, I hear was what you're gambling. saying, but I, I don't know. I was gambling. It doesn't bother me. Um, okay, here's some other news. Uh, Johnny, my partner and I at Hangar 56, have uh, secured a Jeep Gladiator 2020 yes. launch edition. And I could not be more excited, Zuckerman. And let me tell you about how this was done. <clears throat> Lest you think that I am using my extremely minor celebrity <laughs> to get any anything, I went on to the Jeep website months ago and put in my email address to get this offer, <laughs> right? And then they said, okay, in four days, April 4th, you can order this car. And I said, okay. And then I waited for the, the email April 4th, and it came in. And then I said, yes, I want it. That's how I secured one of the 4,000, I think, 127 of these cars. Okay. Now, here's, here's where it gets interesting. 
What? You're looking at me a little... No, I'm just wondering if they will ever have a Russell Crowe edition. The Russell, <laughs> the Russell Crowe. <laughs> the Gladiator. <laughs> well, I could make that my car, the Russell Crowe edition. That's yes, a great a idea. a shield and a sword. Maybe you could, like... Remember that one scene where on the chain is the guy's arm? He cuts the guy's arm <clears throat> off of the chain so he can yeah. be free, and then yeah. he uses it as a cudgel. Yeah. You could just drag. Instead of, you know how people have balls on the back of their pickup truck, you could just drag it, uh, somebody's <laughs> arm in the Russell Crowe <laughs> The Gladiator. <laughs> edition of the gladiator i like that yes it's an old reference though that movie's like what 30 years old at this I'm point i'm old i know i'm I know. old but i like this idea i like where you're going with it um okay so i place my order i don't even know what that means i just say i want one right and then on a saturday i i miss a call right and i get this message i'm in the gym working out hey it's the jeep people and then for the next hour i get about 10 calls from different salesmen at the same place or different places? At different places, Pasadena, all over the place. Hey, I'm just calling. We're trying to get this, like, and, and I'm talking about Saturday between 9 and noon. Your name <laughs> went into, like, the general call this guy? Yeah, and I think they were just calling down every lead. Like, I've got the leads. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, here are the leads. And everybody starts from Jeep. Always starts be closing. Calling. ABC, Call, always be closing. Always Call, well, I got another one. I got another one. Mr. Ferris and Mr. Ferris, I, they, you know, no clue what I do or who I am. And finally, I, in the middle of a workout on a treadmill, I call, I call one of the guys. I go, look, you got to stop. I really want this thing, but stop calling. Me. I'll call you guys back they're, when I get off the treadmill. They're not used to having something people want. <laughs> right. Now, apparently, they sold out all 4,000 of these cars. How many are there? 4,124 of them, right? That's a lot. But again, what sold out means is is unclear to me. Let me look. Uh, launch what edition. 4,190 units were available for only one day. And that 4,190 is also symbolic of, oh, the area code of Toledo, Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that's, that's it. Go that's, Toledo. <laughs> go Toledo, for obvious reasons. Um, and then I got a call. And then I got, so <clears throat> I talked to Russ. Finally, a uh, nice fella. I, and, and I was on the way. I was with you. I was driving with you on the way to Malibu. And Russ calls. And I go, perfect timing. You know, I, I, I can uh, put you on the uh, speakerphone and we'll, we'll order a car. He goes, what do you need to do? He goes, just tell me the color. I'm like, that's it? He goes, yeah, I just need to know the color. I go, okay, uh, we want metallic gray. He goes, okay, that's it. I go, there's no deposit? And he goes, nope, that's fine. Why Toledo? <clears throat> Well, Zuckerman, you're missing what I'm saying here. I, I no one cares about li- Toledo, but 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 yeah, that's weird too. But here's this is weirder, okay? So I say, so I've ordered the car. He goes, you've ordered the car. By the time I get to coffee with you, I get the uh, I get the invoice <laughs> from Dave Dave Maxwell and Who's not Russ. Russ and Russ. Dave Maxwell's his boss, Santa Monica Chrysler Jeep Dodge, and these guys have it all specked out and done. They're like, thank you. We're uh, excited that you're getting this car. We'll let you know when it's going to be built. They said 45 to 90 days. Now, so far, this has been the easiest ordering experience okay. when, for when, a car I've ever had. Okay, so when will the other shoe drop? You know something's going to go wrong. It can't be this easy. Well, what? Do you, what? Uh, that's what I'm bringing up. What What other shoe do you think is going to drop? Well, when they call you and say, yeah, we want 30000 over a sticker, Mr. Ferriston. And is that when you say <laughs> you think Dave is my... going to do that? Of course, why Dave sounded he? like a perfectly nice guy. He's a car salesman. Russ sounded like a car salesman. Okay, he's a car salesman too. They're both trying to take your money <clears throat> to be their money. Okay, so all of these cars are spec'd out at the same price. They're spec'd out identically. They all sticker at sixty two three ten. And as I'm looking down the invoice, right, and I sent it to John for him to have a look. You go down, you see the tonneau cover, the off road group, the wireless uh, removable speaker, the spray and bed liner. By the way. I could not be more excited for this Gladiator. This, I am going to get back to my white trash Massachusetts roots. That's what I'm doing. There is one line in there, Zuckerman. Non-equipment, 24Z, $11,300. What is that? That's called a (laughs) (laughs) ripoff. Do you think that they just baked in? If it's not not equipment, does does it mean that means not part of the car? 
But do you think they just baked in a little something something for the dealership? It has to be. If it's non equipment, what could that possibly mean? Dave. Dave and Russ, I want you Russ guys. Russ and Dave are going to be, we'll split the 11,000 non equipment <laughs> and throw some at the other guy. Well, this has been a long time since Jeep has had something cool. That people I want. love Jeeps. I've owned them. I'm, I'm so, I could not be more excited okay. about this. I'm going to get KTM mo- uh, motorcycles put in the back, dirt bikes. It's going to be crazy, Zuckerman. I'm going to tell you what the Toledo is. Okay. You want to hear? Yeah. Toledo is also a place in Spain. And Toledo probably had a gladiator ring in it when it was a Roman city. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's what you think is happening. That's the only connection I can make to Toledo. I can I can tell you. I can tell you. Is that where they're manufacturing these things? Hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me find this out since uh, I brought it up now. I can never uh... Oh, here it is. Do we want to talk about Champion Porsche? That's another day. I can never uh, find my notes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, for the love of fucking God, you're so old. Thank you. Well, you know, I've got a real job, and I have to put this show together before I do that. Here we go. Here's Russ. (laughs) Here are the guys. Okay, hold on. Here it is. Here it is right here. Epically slow internet here at Podcast One. Right, we are in the nineties. I'm in a modem situation <laughs> right here. A lot of people using it. <clears throat> On the tailgate, you'll find a one of four thousand one hundred ninety <laughs> badge. All right, advertising the fact that it's not that rare. <laughs> the number reference re- references four nineteen area code of Toledo, Ohio, where the Gladiator is assembled alongside the Wrangler. Oh, that's what it is. That's where they put it together. You think 4,190 is rare, Zuckerman? Well, it's the area caught of acid rain. Um, there no, you go. No, do you think it's rare? Do I think it's rare? No. That number. No. Well, they sold them all out, man. Okay, let's see how many of the how many Yahoos are actually going to take uh, you know possession of them. All right, and follow uh, through quickly. I'm going to do this quickly. I don't mean to be snobby. It's just you know not everyone's going to take it. What do you mean? Ordering is one that's, thing, that's paying is another. Think. Exactly. Exactly. Probably it's me. a lot of money for a Jeep when it comes down to it. Uh huh. All right. Somebody sent us some 911R stats, some production stats on the 911R. I thought, and I don't have a lot of time for this, so I'm just going to do a couple questions to you. I thought it'd be fun to quiz you on what you think, and I, there's no reason that you should know any of this stuff. But quiz but me. I thought it would be I fun. Wish I, is there a buzzer for me to press to figure out? Just to see how, how I, I just curious how much you. My would whole guess. life is a quiz. Go for it. So this is 911R stats. Okay, production stats. Top secret. We're not supposed to have them. Okay. We've got so many people giving us good information. I love it. Ask away. Whoever uh, sent this, I want you to send the GT2 Ask away. RS diff. All right. Most common color. Oh. Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that. The most common color, <clears throat> I would have to say, would be, um, motherfucker, black. That is incorrect. Think, think. Silver. No, think white. of the when the car came out. White. They made 539 white 911 Really? Black, they only made 66, Zuckerman. Oh, I got a rare one. I know. But there are some even more uh, rare. Okay. Which... Wait, what's the second most popular color then? Take a guess. It's silver? obvious. Silver. Right, correct. Yeah. Then it, the third color listed, but not the most popular color. Let's see. Because these aren't listed in order. Yeah. Is then we get, and then the black is the third most popular color, but only at 66. Really? Then you go to yellow, racing Oof. yellow. Can you believe that? How many? 30? 23. Followed by lava orange 12. That's it, huh? That's it. And then we're in single digits for the rest of them. Lots of ones, but some interesting slate gray, like Ben Clymer got yeah. a slate gray. Seven of those, right? Etna blue. Two. Two, exactly. And then lots of ones. But we have Very interesting. acid green, Etna blue, Brewster green, ice blue metallic. Ice, ice green metallic. These are great names. Green yellow, green. gray black. Didn't we see a gray black car? No, we saw an olive black or a black olive. Gulf blue. Oh, man. Birch green. Yeah, very light. This very, is good. Okay. Very beautiful. That's the first part of my quiz. Here's, how many total? <clears throat> the second part of my quiz is how many total. Oh, Are that's you what ready? I was gearing up for. Well, I don't have the total because I don't. I can't add these up in in real time. But let's talk about quantity and country. All right. Which country 
in the world has the most 911Rs? U.S. of A. Correct, Zuckerman. Ding, ding, ding. Now it's going to get very hard. Who's number two? Oh, motherfucker, you are. <laughs> so are 296 you? to the United States. We know they made 991 of these, right? I'm going to say take. Canada's got a good, a good chance of being number two. What country would you be afraid to visit, given your nationality? Germany. <laughs> Correct! <laughs> 237. Where does Canada come in? They're not even on the list. Oh, oh wait, hold on. They are. 27 cars. That's it. 27 cars. Only wow. 27 well, Germany. cars. Germany. Okay. What about the... Okay. Guess where the least amount of 911 R's are in the world. Which two countries each only have one car apiece? One is obvious, one not so obvious. Panama has one. <laughs> no. India, Kenya, or Kenya, I don't know where that is, K-E-N-I-A, and Pakistan all share one 911 R. <laughs> I heard there's only one in Panama from the guy who, who ah, follows us. This is not even on this list. And one in Denmark. Why only one there? I don't I know. Mean, Kenya. I can see Kenya. That would probably... Where do you drive it in Kenya? Guess how many they have in the Arab Gulf states. The, probably at least 20. 26. There you go. Isn't that... Then the rest are pretty ordinary numbers, but... I want I want these lists for all the cars. I find this fascinating. Because, yeah, I definitely want to know like what country do I not know? I've never heard of has one car. Right, right. Lower Slobovia, one well, car. France, Italy, Switzerland, Five to all seven. in the forties. Australia oh. has forty. God, think about that. A forty for the the entire of Australia. Just that's, that's a lot. It. Then, do you yeah. think that's a lot? No, I they think that's hard for them. Yeah, that, yeah, but do you think they're aren't... driving them in right hand drive? I think they are. I think they are. Hey, the last of the V8 interceptors. And, all right, we got to bring Barry out in a minute. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, he's much funnier than any of <clears> us. Get him in here. When we come back, we'll have the great Barry Martyr. You know what? There are a lot of weird things you find in cars, and I'm not talking about garden variety petrified French fries or melted crayons or crumbs. I'm talking about live snakes, bizarre artifacts, the kind of stuff that just makes you wonder about people. Another thing that will make you wonder, but in a good way, are Continental Belts. Bet you didn't know they're OE in tens of millions of Chrysler, Dodge, and Ford GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. They're also OE on the majority of BMWs and VWs. Now, Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE pedigree. It's their OE technology series, belts that are fanatically engineered for perfect fit, form, and function. And Continental has an OE technology series multi-V belt for 98% of the vehicles on the road in the United States and Canada. Hey, you get enough surprises working on cars and trucks, a belt should not be one of those surprises. Go with the Continental OE technology series multi-V belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. To get the full story, visit oetechnologyseries.com, oetechnologyseries.com. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. Sign some insurance papers for me, right? We're back with Spike's Car Radio. Things have already, wheels have come off Spike's Car Radio. Barry Martyr sitting right across from me already. Hi, hi, Barry. How are you? How are you? If you don't know Barry Martyr, <laughs> if you don't know Barry, what's the best way to describe Barry? I guess one thing you should know about Barry is Barry and I and Andy Robin and Jerry Seinfeld wrote the Bee movie. That's correct. The Bee's name was Barry the Bee, uh -huh. I'm guessing, after That's you. That's correct. Um... You were also uh, instrumental in helping Jerry write a stand-up on the Seinfeld show. Is That's that true? Correct. That is true. You sir. were also Jerry Seinfeld's oldest friend. I wouldn't at say ninety-three old. years old. <laughs> You're off by one year. Yeah. <laughs> but you and Jerry grew up together. No, no, no. We didn't and grow up together. You're the same age. Uh, yes, I met Jerry when he was a stand-up here in the early '80s. Right. Just met him. Uh, you know, and that's how I met him. I didn't know him. I didn't grow up with him. But he, he's, uh, you're the guy he calls every night. We talk every night. You talk every night. Right. Every single night we talk and we chat and, uh, you know, we talk more than once a day. You uh, own several Seinfeld cars or one? Uh, we returned a couple of the cars. They've broken down. <laughs> they, oh, this is <laughs> a One car plan. went down when the, like the Laurel and Hardy. Well, let's uh, back up. Let's back up. I happen to know that he Gave you a Mercedes diesel? Is right. that what it was? It was a Mercedes. Was this the car that you and I and Jerry went to Dodger Stadium and in it and broke, broke down? down? There. <laughs> it broke down there. I've had the car towed quite a bit. And I gave it to my brother. And uh, we were taking so, it to Jerry's uh, mechanic. 
who uh, <laughs> this is what I hear. That's going to be twelve hundred. <laughs> That's going to be nineteen hundred. Favors like that are no favors yes. at all. So it broke down until the point of. Um, <laughs> I think at one point there was some SWAT teams moving in just on the car, you know, the, the, the foot shuffle. <laughs> Where is the car now? I remember I was, this is one of the beautiful, like, uh, J.G. Francis cars, Mercedes motoring, blue right. with a blue interior. This car uh, was gorgeous. It was a beautiful car. <laughs> if you we wanted drove to just look the... at it on the back of a uh, back of a triple a tow truck <laughs> it was good looking so the first drive we took it to dodger stadium we all went to the game we came out it wouldn't start jerry yeah. is opening the hood up right. he's like you know doing that thing we yeah. all do when looking. we think we can yeah looking just gonna look in there i gotta put my hands in this before i call the tow truck we, we all do that dodger... I, w- I was filming him yeah. on my phone pretending to be tmz because it was just the cr- it was really a fun night we had at one point because we were at dodger stadium forty thousand people pushing us <laughs> <laughs> Did we ever? We didn't drive home in that car, right? No, no. no that... There was a constant transferring with that car. Okay, yeah. so after that, Jerry has the car, and then he calls you up one day and he says, "I told him I needed a car," which was which is the worst <laughs> thing I could have said to him. <laughs> and he, well, that's really first of all, he tried sweet he, of him. He, he gave you this car. I told him, you know what? Here's what happened. I remember that now. We were sitting in uh, Starbucks, and he said to me, uh, "I'm going to give you this car," and I didn't want the car. <laughs> Really, I'm happy with what I have. Right. I have a 2003 Mitsubishi with 60,000 miles. The Montero, on. right? The Montero. Yes. Works just fine. Yeah, it works fine. It's I, totally wouldn't, fine. I wouldn't say that, but yes. And I, I said, um, he said, I want to give you this car. And I said, I really don't need a car. I mean, I'm totally happy with the car I have. <laughs> and then uh, he said to me, um, I asked my girlfriend, Phyllis, <laughs> and I said, do you need this car? And she said, no, no, I don't want that car. I don't want that car. And then finally my brother took the car so i said to, wait your brother took it i took i, I gave it to uh I, I cleared it with jerry and i said i'm going to give the car to my brother alan he really needs a car okay um and we gave it to him and it broke down <laughs> while they were giving it to me and while i was returning it it broke down it broke down twice it was in it was in one of the most stunning looking cars it worked great uh we took it around uh when when he bought it he bought two of them right he, he went does a, that. He went around and he bought the car from the... Uh, like ordering hot dogs at right. Dodger Stadium. Give me two. Uh, Mercedes yeah. diesels. Yeah. That's the way he does things. Yeah. Yes. He did that with 944s. And then I was calling Sam... <laughs> is it Sam Caballero? Is that his name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's him. Uh, Sam Catalero. Is it Catalero? No. It's Caballero. Sam Caballero. Oh, Caballero. Jerry's I car call, consigliere. I call him the yes. Caballero, the, the gay car uh, purveyor. Per- <laughs> <laughs> Just from the gay Caballero. So, guy uh, Caballero. Guy Caballero. Yeah, not gay. <laughs> So uh, no wonder he didn't talk to me for the entire month of August. So we finally, uh, he, I had a mechanic that I was using, using named Richard that was his, uh, you know, this car's, he was going to fix this car, which he must have fixed seriously about 30 times. And it could never get it. We would drive, we would drive out of the place and it would mm-hmm. break down. Right. It broke down twice on his lot. <laughs> which, well, where's the car now? Um, Who has it? Do you know that I told, called Jerry and I said, look, tell Barry to bring the car to my hangar and I will get this sorted for him. I'll take care of everything. Well, well he was very gracious, Jerry, because he actually said these words to me. Worst gift I've ever given anyone in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, you should be proud of that. And we, um, <clears throat> but is it working now? Where's the car today? The car, Sam went ahead. This is, yep. this is how classy these guys are. Mm-hmm. Went ahead and got my brother a Jetta, a brand new Jetta. Right. In lieu of that car... <laughs> You know, we had something like uh, 410. I feel like I'm interviewing William Barr right now in front of Congress. (laughs) Where is the Mercedes today? Where is the Barr? Where is the Mercedes? Uh, We had 410 man hours into the into the car, so they went ahead and got on this uh, this um, Jetta. (laughs) He's not answering the question. The the car is okay. They they picked it up on a tow again. Mm -hmm. We watched it go away on a flatbed. On a flatbed, <clears throat> and you've never seen. And it since. the flatbed broke down. That's how, that's the curse <laughs> that's of the car. It was a business. transference. That's how that was how. Wow. But so you don't know where the car went off to. No, Jerry <laughs> said he got his money back. <clears throat> You know, it was, it was all done very nicely through Jerry's sister. Well, Carolyn. he's always constantly buying cars from J.G. Francis, so yeah. I'm sure he. The guy just was very it nice about it. One. He took yeah, it yeah. right back with minimum cursing. <laughs> Do <laughs> you really I, have a girlfriend named Phyllis? Phyllis, a fantastic oh, yeah, woman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. You're not going to meet a, a Phyllis every day. No, that's for sure. I love not. this woman. 
I absolutely am in love with Phyllis Murphy is her name. I've been with her for uh, over 20 years. Nobody on this podcast wants to hear this well, conversation. What do you hear? She has the car. <laughs> she has Now do you want to hear it? What car? The Mercedes. You no. want to hear it now? <laughs> she doesn't have it. No. Is your Mer- is your uh, Montego still working? Yes, barely. Whatever, whatever barely. it was. Mitsubishi. I wouldn't mind that Mercedes back now because it, it's breaking down less than that the- That car is r- so wrong for you. I know you pretty well. There's no way you're going to want that. Which one? That Mercedes. It's just that's not, not a, right. That's not a Barry car. You need something reliable I that drove, you can count on. Anything you that you would be thinking about that Mercedes at night at 3 in the morning. I flew, so when when Barry and I were working on B-movie and writing it, we would have to fly to New York and back, and we always flew together, and I would watch him get annoyed by passengers, and we would be flying first class right. a lot of the time, Right. right. And he would he'd be looking over, he'd be making these scowls, and I'm like, I'd go over, and i go, what are you upset about? And he goes, did you hear how loudly the guy next to me is turning the newspaper? I understand And I that. go, no, he looks like he's reading a newspaper. <laughs> he was turning this paper really loud. <laughs> he, really loudly. But I want to tell is you. Is there such a thing as soft There is newspaper, newspaper was, etiquette, for sure. The car, but he was, uh, trust me, he was fine. He was fine. You just didn't like, you just, you know, you're, you're a comedian. You don't like right. people. When I was in high school, since this is a car show, you will get a kick out of this. This is a true story. I was in high school. My father bought me a very, very used, um, the uh, car uh, that Ralph Nader said, unsafe at any Corvair. speed, the Corvair. Yep. It was bright yellow. And as we're driving it home, I look in the bookstore and it says the Corvair, unsafe at any speed. <laughs> right. This is the car that this man put me in. Right. <laughs> Your dad. In, like, a, like a 10, 15-year-old Corvair. You think he was sending you a message? Uh, he made sure when he bought it, he said, are you sure it's unsafe at any speed? <laughs> we I don't think, want a safe at any speed car. I think about that car all the time, Zuckerman, because I think most of the old stuff that we drive is just as unsafe, of if course. not more unsafe, and right? I, I actually am fascinated by the, by the idea of a turbocharged Corvair, which yeah. they made and had, a, I think, 180 horsepower uh, and I want to drive that unsafe car. Yeah. I want to know what it's like to drive <clears throat> GM's turbocharged offering wow. from the 1960s. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're getting crazy. We're Why buying not? Jeeps and Mercedes diesels and everything else. Yep. Are we going to talk about anything that interests me? What would you like to talk about? I'd like to talk about my play. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that. Okay. we got plenty of time. Do we? We've I'm got, hungry. We've got 40 minutes. Oh, I got forty minutes. Let's let's stretch it out then. Let me let's do... talk about your play. I'm no, just we don't joking with you. About it. Let's no, talk about you what... came on here. Right. You wanted to talk about letters from a nut. I right. have a lot of questions about letters from a nut. Go letters ahead. Is, letters from a nut started off as a book series, right? That's G- tell everybody the premise. Well, you actually got me the play going. I don't know if you know that. You got the... <clears throat> I didn't, but before we get to the play, right. I just think people Mr. might Bar. not know about the book. Tell them it's 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 like you're writing letters to corporations. I was sitting with Phyllis. As was, a this, fictional this, crazy person, but really... You want to know how the whole thing started? You're kind of an authentic crazy person. I was sitting with Phyllis. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. Yes. And um, she was, you know, sitting on the edge of the bed. What are you guys doing up at 4 in the morning? We're, we're, we're... Is it cocaine night or something? No, we don't, we don't do any drugs at all. Just okay. coffee? We're just up. You're you up at 4. want to hear the story? Or well, do you wait, want... had you been up all night? Want... Or did you just get up at 4 in the no, morning? No, no, we had been up partying. <laughs> Is that what you want to hear? Yes. Yeah, what, like, are you creepy? You no, know, yeah. I want to know why you're up at four in the morning, a man of your age and stature. This was 25 years ago. Oh, 25 years ago. Okay. Jesus. Okay. And she was sitting on the edge of the bed, mindlessly watching TV, kind of listening to me. What was and, she wearing? Oh, you're creepy. You're Joe Biden creepy, aren't you? I like Joe Biden when he sniffs the hair. Looks like looks like uh, Tony Curtis in the Boston Strangler. When his, uh, <laughs> eyes go back into his head and the complete sniff of the head. All right, keep, um, continue, continue. By the way, this is good. full disclosure, I sniffed Raul Castro's shampoo bottle. <laughs> I don't just even know what that Did your hair fall out? <laughs> oh, just I've been waiting for you to work in Bob Crane murder scene. So. <laughs> I remember the Bob Crane. I wanted to open up a restaurant uh, <laughs> called the uh, Bob Cranes, and just on the wall have the pictures of the, the shoe print in the blood. The, li- the, li- the ligature, some hands choking on the- <laughs> <laughs> 
This is good. I, I'm up going. Up Bob Crane, when sir. you write in a room with Barry, you'll hear like there are ten jokes that he's still trying to squeeze into something. And you brought up Bob, Bob Crane. Crane. Bob you Crane him, murder scene. You brought up. So Bob believe Crane. it or not, in B movie, at least once a week, the Bob Crane murder scene was pitched. <laughs> Bob Crane to B would, like, is stop. filming pervy B movie. This is a kids movie. Nobody <laughs> wants to reference one the of my Bob favorite Crane. favorite B movie things with Spike. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were going to these uh, at um, the uh, the theater they had over there on Flower Street, a beautiful theater at DreamWorks, and Spike was in the middle of the row, and I was at the end of the row, and I see Katzenberg, you know, walking <clears throat> over, and I, you know, I was thinking, why does he walk over to Spike, and he doesn't walk over to me? <laughs> you know, what's Spike doing? I'm just as funny as Spike, you know? And he was he, he came over, and I thought, he's going to talk to Spike. Spike's probably going to get a nice DreamWorks deal out of this, you know? And he came over to Spike, and he and he said to Spike, you can't drink your coffee in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and Spike that's had, what he's concerned that's, about. And that's Spike had, real Katzenberg. Right. That is the Katzenberg yeah. experience from my point well, of view. Well, here's the other one. It's like that. Now, we, at, the, at the time, by the way, I'm the Fox Late Night host. <laughs> just trying, we were, we were just helping a, out with this dumbass movie. Yeah. And you're getting yelled at friend, by a Jewish Not lady. making any residuals. <laughs> and this guy who's been harassing me nonstop anyways about what I'm spending on my hotel room oh, in New remember, York. You remember the Tom that? Then he does. I forgot about that. Now you're getting me mad. That was on the plane. Right. Spike and I were on Jerry's <laughs> plane ready to go back to New York. And Jerry comes on <laughs> and he sits down in front of us. And I see a hand going up with a letter. Do you really and want the, to tell this I story? want to no, tell it. Telling. And it says, on the top of the letter, Miss Your Spielberg and Miss Your Katzenberg. And I thought, oh my God, we must be doing so. We, we're, we finally reached Mr. Spielberg and Mr. Katzenberg personally. And Jerry reads us the letter that says, We were spending too much on the hotel honor bar, especially Andy, Andy uh, this is true. Robbins was spending $3,500 a week in the hotel honor bar. And I was trying to explain to Jerry, uh, I said, That was, we were allowed so much money to spend for food. But you, have to, and, you have to explain what the circumstances of the situation are we are flying to new york to help jerry write b movie as right. pretty much as a favor to jerry and and to dreamworks right we're not even getting residuals Nothing. we've got world's shittiest contracts yes and part of that deal was hey will you at least pay for our travel because you're asking us to fly monthly to right. new york and stay there so would you put us up in a hotel and would you fly us there in business or whatever whatever we had <clears throat> they said absolutely and here's the amount of money you can spend on a hotel I'll stay wherever you want. And that was it. Most of us are men of means, and we were like, great, we'll take that money and put it in whatever hotel we want to right. stay in. And we're we're paying for any any overages, which which I believe, maybe I'm wrong, was $400 a night, right? I so, forget what it was, but Andy so, was coming but, in from but, Rhode Island. And Andy was coming in from, yeah, Rhode Island. So he would just check in at the hotel. So like any normal person, you're like, well... Hotel, $600, but I get $400 towards it. They're just going to pay me directly. I'll stay wherever I want. And, and Andy the same right. and Barry the same. We would, Let's stay in different hotels and see because we're getting this kind of discounted rate because we're getting subsidized right. for it. But then this letter about optics. And Jerry didn't want to hear any of the particulars about our deal. He doesn't like to talk money with anybody. Somehow word got to Katzenberg that we were staying at these nice hotels. He in was New at York. the Marian, the Mandarin Oriental. Right. And now keep in mind, we're not submitting bills to DreamWorks You're to go getting a per diem. We're right. getting a per diem. Right. right? Spend it as you will. But Andy and was spending $3,500 a week on the honor bar <laughs> <laughs> because he wasn't staying in the hotel. Andy. He was, yeah, he's going to medical school. He's assigned for a ride. He's staying at the Mandarin Oriental. Right. I'm staying at the Four Seasons, which was my favorite hotel at the time. And but they start, they got really worked up about the optics of this. But again, we had to write letters. We're helping. We're helping them. Do you what? have that letter? Wait, we had to write this letters. This letter was never handed over to us. No, no, hang on. I had to write the letters because both you and Andy did not want to write a letter to apologize. It was not. Can't. Did not. I laughed and said, "I'm not going to do it." So Jerry said but, to me. Please, I have to work with this man. So I wrote Andy's letter like a child in crayon. Dear Mr. Katzenberg, very sorry about the Spanish peanuts that I spent $2,100 on and the small uh, liqueurs, and especially my $1,500 a night Toblerone fix. Yeah, you kept saying, I, I apologize. Yeah. 
for for spending DreamWorks money on Toblerones. Yes. And is this <laughs> where we slave away and I on this one for Spike on this animated movie, and we try to help yeah. our friend for no residuals. And I got a nice <laughs> call from Mr. Katzenberg's assistant, you who did. said. You were the only person that really put some energy into Andy's letter. <laughs> a for and I said, Andy's loaded up on chocolate. He's into a he's he's into a dreidel swirl off the top of the table there, you know. Oh my God! And uh, is this where was... Cats and Jammer came from? No, we this... just called him Cats and Jammer. Yeah. It wasn't. Be, we like it wasn't. him. We like Jeffrey Katzenberg. It was all fun. I mean, Steven Spielberg was helping us with the movie. He would call up and right. give us. <clears throat> remember, he'd say like, you know, you really need to do a barroom scene or or a cocktail, right? A bar scene, and he would call with these great notes. The yeah. whole thing was sold to to uh, Spielberg over dinner in East Hampton. Right. He, he, you know, I heard Spielberg, it was a joke. Spielberg said to Jerry, "He said to Jerry, because you should we should do a movie. He goes, right. how about something animated? He goes, great. He goes, you got any ideas? He's like, yeah. How about a B movie about bees called B." movie Meanwhile, and he got t- sold and that w- that became the movie it became and then it was an the iconic four- movie for right you know i mean and the four of us i just got a, i just got a text about it this past weekend from my uh my good friend uh who, whose young kids are like we're we're in the b movie stage of our it's, right. but now we thought we were writing a movie for jerry's fans and maybe college kids right but this movie resonates most with two to six year olds. <laughs> it's up. You should see the reviews. Are and this phenomenal. is what it was. The, my friend with with two year old and a three year old said they love this movie because well, there are no dangerous characters. This is what I this is what I love, and I've I've told Jerry this on Twitter. You see comments like, "Let me get this straight: this white woman and this bee are having having intimacy." <laughs> And I go, that's pretty much it. Right. It's the movie. You, know? <clears throat> you had to put white woman in there. Well, she was a white woman. <laughs> yes, so yes, she was. <laughs> yes. But there was, yeah, there was always this funny dynamic in the writer's room where we don't have any, all the animation was in, in Glendale. Right. So we're writing two characters, right? right? Barry and Vanessa. And we would write them as kind of this flirty right. friendship. Right thing forgetting yeah, that it's one a big, of them is an insect right. and the other yeah. one is like a beautiful woman and and, and, and then, then then it was like when we started looking at the picture we're like god this is really weird it's They're, turning into <laughs> some kind of really yeah what is uh, this not even uh you know anything that's even remotely what it is today where people are changing sexes and buying sex parts on amazon no you know? It's nothing even like that. It, it was, was it was so much fun, and we're you know we're complaining and making light of the Katzenberg moments, but we have so much fun with it. I'm yeah. so grateful for that part of it. It was it's it been was a fun really to fun do. Yeah. thing to do. Right. It's been uh, I really want to do, and I keep telling Jerry, and I know you feel the same way. I think we should do with Katzenberg over at Quibi. We should do B movie two. Yeah. This is a whole new thing he's got going on right. over there. Ten minute episodes. Right. We should do a ten episode series of B movie two. Right? I, 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 I have talked to him on numerous <clears throat> occasions about B movie two because the public really wants it. I know they want it. I mean, and I think a small fun series that right. we could write that Jerry could voice. Right, and I think you know Quibi's perfect for it. I, and, and and Katzenberg. Quibi's going to be launching in about a year. It's everything's. It's going to be the Netflix of ten minute episodes. Right. Quibi stands for quick bites. Really. And you've got Katzenberg, who must have some rights to this thing. We might have some of the drawings left yeah. in the storage facility <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Yeah. We should really have a wink and a nod uh, TV series about the weirdness of B movie, right? Well, don't you think? Without a doubt, I've talked to him, and he's and you know he's. Well, uh, let's just take it out of Jerry's hands. We have to. I'm over there My a lot, favorite and should I of... survive this story we just told of Mr. Katzenberg, I will pitch it directly to him. He My favorite this, part right? of it is when, like when we wrote Ray Liotta. Was <laughs> Ray Liotta, of all people. This movie had, had nobody really that... There was no audience for it at one point. <laughs> Ray Liotta is running all the honey. He's got a honey company. <laughs> He's stealing the bees' honey. Yeah, we Ray, were losing Ray, our minds. We there. had Ray Liotta private stock. <laughs> <laughs> private stock honey. It was good. Do I need to take another break, and then we got to talk about what Barry's here to do? Okay. This has been a lot of fun, Barry. We'll be right back with more Barry Martyr, Letters from a Nut, after this. Everybody's got a to-do list. I have a to-do list, and item number three is make to-do list. Ah, did you get it? Drop off the dry cleaning. Pick up some milk. Here's an idea. Let's have, save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Now that I really do want to do. And the good thing is you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. All you have to do is go to geico.com and in 15 minutes you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. I'm doing it. Extra money in my pocket. I want it. It just may be the most rewarding to do 
you do today. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. We're back! World's shortest break. All right, Barry. Yes. Let's promote what you're here to promote. It's been fun talking about everything else, but we gotta we gotta get into the business of, of why you're here. We did the books. We the were talking about the book, right. which is Letters from a Nut. Just tell us. You, you said Phyllis was naked on the end of the she bed. She wasn't naked. All night she wasn't bitch. naked. She was fully clothed. <laughs> and she was in negligence. <clears throat> and we, what, what happened? We were. This was after an evening of amour. Okay. And she was on the edge of the bed watching TV. <laughs> yes. And I was sitting in a chair, and I never eat Fritos, but she had bought a bag of food, and I went, oh, there's some Fritos, you know. I know what a Frito is. I'm not a moron, but I never eat them. So on the back of the bag, I was kind of, you know, like talking to myself out loud, and I said uh, to Phyllis, I said, uh, hey, listen to this. Fritos got a little uh, thing on the back. It says, got any problems, got any issues? Write to Fritos. We want to hear from you. And I, thought, <laughs> I said, you know, what kind of issues are you going to mm-hmm. unload on a corn chip company, you know? I mean, and, I, and, and she was going, you know, ha-ha, kind of half listening to me. And I said, what would you say? And I, I looked at the Frito and I said, maybe you, you didn't understand the concept of a Frito. And you would say, <laughs> I got the Frito out of the bag and it was all <clears throat> curled mm-hmm. and hard and crunchy and salty and stale. So I threw the bag away and I bought another Frito. And I told her that and I said, who would do this? And she says, a nut would do that. That's where it started. Then the next day I was in the 99 cent store buying some Bon Ami cleaner, uh, the cleanser, because I only <laughs> like cleanser from the 20s. And uh, it said on there, you got any problems, write to Bon Ami with any, any, <laughs> and it was stamped, but the stamp <clears> was smudged, and it said like Gordon Brucar the fourth, or it couldn't have been Gordon Brubar the third. It was all smudged. Anyway, I got into, I, I wrote to this guy. Stay on that mic, Barry. Stay on that mic. I got I into a you. whole uh, back and forth by, in the mail with Gordon Brucar. So these people wrote you back. The wrote corporations back. wrote you back. I was showing my mother the Gordon Brucar um, <laughs> stuff, and she said, he's he's worse than you. He's really, you know, because I said, well, who's writing a starch company, you know, <laughs> raving about Babo or, or, or <clears throat> you know, mm-hmm. Rinso. Yep. Anyway, so I, I went and I took him to Dan Strone, Rinso. who was Jerry's um, agent at the time at okay. the William Morris Agency. And... Um, he thought he could sell these, and he did. He got a deal, and he sold these, and I couldn't believe it. So we had a book out, and the book became a bestseller, and then more books came. How you many know, of these books have you written? I would say there's probably uh, maybe nine or ten. Or <laughs> wow, it wow, became that's a, sickness, a sickness. A decalogue. So then, at some point, you decide with Jerry that you're going to turn this into a show, right? Because I well, you helped hmm. me here. You okay. were you were tell instrumental. Me how. Okay, I'll tell I don't you even how. Remember this. You and I about 6 <clears throat> or 7 years ago, you wanted to start doing stand up. So right. you and I That's were right. kind of banging out some stand up yes. together, writing some stand up. I was out there doing it. Right, you right. were doing it. And we would sit in Jerry's Deli and we would write some stand up. That's right. You That's and right. I. And so you were doing that it. That was really and fun. You were, Let's you were do having that again. fun with it, right? Yes. And but I, thought, I had babies in the house, and it was you hard had Jack to get Carter, out after 10 o'clock. Jack Carter that you Jack named Carter your, Ferriston, your yes. son after a bust out, uh, yep. you know. Uh, <laughs> Jack Henry's the, his the name. The place looks wonderful <laughs> from here. You all look wonderful from here. kind of. Kinda. Okay, so we're at the deli. We're at the deli, and jokes. then you're doing the jokes. And then I kept reading online. People were saying, I read these letters out loud, and people mm-hmm. laugh. And I'm very proud that these letters are totally clean. There's not a dirty word in these letters. They're very just clean and clever. We've sold them to Scholastic. The teachers were teaching them in school, and the kids were reading them. <laughs> and, you know, and um, we... Uh, so how know. does it get to be a show? So what happened was I called you up, and I said, Hey, Spike, you're out there doing stand-up. Do you know any place where I can kind of... Try to see if oh, this even right. works. This. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, I want to read these letters by myself. Right. And you said, I do. I know a guy named Scott Shannon who runs the Third Street Promenade Playhouse. Oh, yeah. And you and I, you were very gracious. You, That's you drove right. me over there. I'm on uh, Santa Monica, you know, Third Street at about 10 at night. What kind of and car did I have? You had. You um, that same over. that same Mercedes <clears throat> that broke down. Now. <laughs> I, I, and now bro- we had it towed off the Third Street Promenade. Oh, and I brought you over there. Now you brought I brought me over that. there. Yeah, I like that little club. Is right. that still there? Oh yeah, it's oh, fifty go seats, back. and I, I go had back. started reading the letters together and doing stand up, and it was working. You know, uh, fifty seat club. Sam Quasman came over there. He was opening for me because he was driving me. So yeah, Third Street Promenade has a lot of tourists coming in. They kind of sweep right. tourists in. It's a nice year little old, audience, right? It's about old. twenty-five people sit there. Fifty people. Fifty. Fifty people. They're crammed in there. Scott was. Uh, 
you know, uh, running the room, Scott Shannon, <clears throat> and mm-hmm. uh, you know, he had a he had some pretty good comics over there. This guy wrote for the for the Bill Maher show. Another guy worked for the Farrelly Brothers. Right. So he had some pretty decent comics mm-hmm. over there, you know, as he still does. And so for about three months, I was you you drove me a few times. Yeah. And then Sam would drive me over there after you know, uh, and then uh, it worked. So then um, I thought, well, this works now. So uh, I got a call once out of the blue from Adam <clears throat> Carolla's company, mm-hmm. Mike August, <clears throat> who runs Adam You're Car- sitting in Adam Carolla's company right now. Right. Just, one. <laughs> Just so you know. And he wanted me to do the <clears throat> podcast. Oh, wow. The Carolla podcast. That's great. And I said, I was thinking of maybe making a play out of this thing. And we got one thing that led to another. He took me over to uh, Clint Mitchell at William Morris, mm-hmm. and they sold it at uh, the Geffen Theater. Now, that's where I reconnect with it again. Right. Because I somewhere saw advertising for it, but it was your last night. <laughs> I was like, why? How come I, ha- I it wasn't invited to the premiere? I want to see this. Well, you'll and be I able to see it because they filmed it. We, huh? did, we did it at the Geffen Theater. Was a, They wanted to get a younger audience because, you know, Geffen is a... Is a <laughs> it's not I, a young audience, right? You no, know, it's, it's what Westwood. I call uh, assisted living guess, Geffen. I love that you, theater, you got, though, Here's what you I'm have old. in Geffen. Right. You have 90-year-old man, a <laughs> hurricane... Mm-hmm. Ninety-two-year-old woman, another hurricane. <laughs> that's that. That's that. Yes. That you know that thing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of huh? Did you get uh, any weird letters from David Geffen, Katzenberg's former partner? No, I don't think he even. He, I don't think he knows what's even going on over there. <laughs> He's no. on some five hundred foot yacht someplace. <clears throat> He's busy blocking his beach gate. <laughs> like this. <laughs> get out of my way! <laughs> He's just standing yeah. out there eight yeah. hours a day. It's a one man show. <clears throat> no, no, we used uh, Beth Kennedy. Now you brought your friend along here. And he Sam Quasman is, is, is in that is play. In he, was, he played uh, Pagliacci, okay. a ridiculous clown that um, <laughs> kept getting interrupted by Pagliacci singing that, that song, kept getting interrupted by cell phone, now, uh, the re- telemarketers on cell phones. You the, know? Re- the reason you're here is you you shot this. We shot now, this at the Geffen Theater. Okay, so you shot one of the performances. We shot it, and um, it and came out great. And I'm guessing we're going to get to see it somewhere. It's now out uh, on uh, Comedy Dynamics. It's now out what on... What is Comedy Dynamics? Comedy Dynamics is a very fine <clears throat> uh, company that gets these things made, gets them distributed. They're doing Howie Mandel stuff. They're doing, uh, you know, Kevin Hart. Uh, they do Jim Gaffigan. This is they, a new streamer. Right. And they... Uh, Got it out to uh, to all these places, and it it's it's now actually airing on Amazon, iTunes, uh, just all over the country. I mean, Wherever you get your media, yeah, whatever you know. So you can actually and, go. And it's letters from a nut. Letters from a nut to play, and then we're also doing with Patrick Warburton. You know, Putty. Yeah. We have a new play with him. We we wrote a completely brand new. I would say about eighty percent, ninety percent brand new play for him, and he's doing it at the Irvine Improv. So he's going to be doing more letters from a nut. Well, it's not more letters. It's still letters from a nut. <laughs> You know, Patrick Warburton was in B-Movie and then every right. other animated movie ever right. made, right? right? He was Putty on Seinfeld, right. Lane's boyfriend. Right. Yeah. Now, he's One doing it. Greats. He's playing Ted Nancy. and we also we, <laughs> How do you get him to play Ted Nancy? Uh, it that... was either that or Ray Liotta. <laughs> well, he's a busy guy. Patrick's he's, working. He's hilarious. And this... he wanted to get up in front of an audience? Yes, he wants to be on this. Oh, we've got a lot of things going on with Patrick, I'll tell you. He and uh, Maggie Egan uh, and Sam Quasman, who's in everything I do. Yep. Uh, Why is it, Sam in everything? He's you just do. a fantastic, funny guy. You is know? he your caretaker? He's a caretaker. He's got a hurricane for me. <laughs> uh, the hurricane. Sam who you, is that one you of keep the, referencing is some sort of walking. I device? met Sam. He was selling real <laughs> estate, and for two years he was riding me around, <clears throat> showing me homes, and right. then. That ended, and we both got sad that I was not being ridden around anymore. So <laughs> Sam just started just driving me around, you know? And he's a fantastic uh, guy to drive Should around we get with. Patrick Patrick Warburton? He'll get you anywhere. Let me tell you something. <laughs> He the other day. Let me tell you how crowded the uh, the uh, 405 freeway was with Sam. We had to drive into Arizona just to get back to the 101, <laughs> and he knows where to go. He'll get you right into Arizona <clears> and get you home. Here's a little bit about Comedy Dynamics, one of the largest independent comedy production and distribution companies, producing Kevin Hart's Guide to Bl- Black History, Animal Planet's Animal Nation with Anthony Anderson. I always thought that was a funny matchup. Hulu, There's Johnny. What's that? History's Join or Die with Craig Ferguson. MTV's uh, Two's Wild on Tour. Hulu's coming to stage. They've got Tiffany Haydish over there. Kevin Hart, Aziz Ansari, Jim Gaffigan, Cat Williams, and many more. Wow. They do a lot. They're a great company. 
So they've got us out, and then Patrick now. They got money? They spending money on you? Yeah, yeah. There you go. You know. That's all that matters. Should we get uh, Patrick Warburton to be in B-Movie 2, the series for Quibi? What do you I think, think? I think Patrick Do you think we could be... just sell it with him? He's hilarious. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Because I forget. Who played Vanessa in B-Movie? Do you remember? Was that Renee Zellweger? That's correct. In fact, it was. It was. Who what changed if... her whole face after the B movie? Like she, <laughs> no, don't she, 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 she completely did major surgery, and it was like going into the witness protection program. Well, I was just going to say, let's try to get Renee to be in B movie too. But now, yes. now she's not going to do it. After John she Goodman. Hears this. John Goodman. We put in a uh, in a uh, he got he got stung by one of the bees. I think Matthew Broderick stung him. Yes. And so they had to replace Matrick Broderick. Matthew Broder- Broderick. Matthew Broderick Stinger with a uh, <laughs> one of those uh, tuna fish things, those swords on a tuna That's f- right, from a sandwich. From a we sandwich. Put that in there, right. And he came in, uh, John Goodman, and he was in a uh, in the courtroom scene. Yes. He was in a, like a diaper chair, wheeling himself, <laughs> like a baby chair. That's right. Wheeling himself around. <laughs> this Zachary, is, I, I, like I must it. tell you. Zachary, I don't, don't watch the movie. I wish you could have just sat in the writer's room with us and hear what was going across the table, because that would make you laugh nonstop. We that had, was really fun to work on that movie, because none of us were really suited to write no, that no. movie. We were the this wrong was so group not of guys a Katz, to write it. Katzenberg movie. No. 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 This is the most bizarre movie you will ever see in your life. <laughs> but it was even more... In previous incarnations, it was oh, even God. crazier. It was even crazier. Well, what are we going to do with B-Movie 2, the series? Where are we going to take it? I wanted to because have... I, go a, ahead. Give a, me your ideas. I but thought, based on the feedback I'm getting, I know where I want to take this. I have a couple thoughts. Some of the ideas that Jerry and I... And he brings this up all the time, you know, but, you know, I think it's a lot of work and it's animation and all these things. But, we, you know, I think about... Uh, I wanted to see a, a like a <clears> film <throat> noir B-Movie like where <clears throat> one of the bees is a cop. Yeah. You know, and he and he's they're handling ridiculous crimes, and uh, you know, um, just that kind of thing. I thought we were talking about, you know. Uh, I don't think that's going to work. What do you think? But I will promise you this: I I think I could get your MetLife windbreaker into the series. <laughs> I've been waiting. You for remember that, that MetLife joke? windbreaker? Tell I the do joke. remember. Tell, I don't tell. remember the joke. It was just another one of your pitches every week, almost every day. That I one said of the bees to, should be wearing a MetLife windbreaker. And Jerry says to me. What are you out of your mind? What B wears a MetLife windbreaker? And I go, you mean the B attorney? You have a you have a lawyer B? He goes, there's no MetLife insurance in a beehive, <laughs> which you're saying to us yeah. at this table. And we have B Larry King, and we have cars. And we're like, well, if there's no uh, car insurance or MetLife insurance, why are there cars, Jerry? And, why and, are they going to college? Why is there B Larry King, who presumably works for BCNN? And why is a bee might have a sponsor and a white MetLife. woman? Why is a bee and a white woman having an affair? <laughs> and Putty would go, woman. oh, is it that bee again? <laughs> I think. Here's what I think. You know, you know, it went crazy a year ago or two years ago. They would say 2016, the biggest movie of 2016 was B-Movie. It was because it went viral on the internet. I still don't understand it. But I think the teenage girls really were curious about that relationship between Barry the Bee and Vanessa. And I think that's where the, the relation- series lies, right? Yeah. I think there might be a little bit of a bee story with killer bees right. and some sort of parallel to dark forces right. in the world taking over our hive. You remember the bee beard? That was the worst, <laughs> the, mo- the, the most indignant thing you could do to a the bees <laughs> right. was put them all in a bee beard. <clears throat> yes, that was the equivalent of uh, black- some. Yes, of, they would. The bees would organize and say, "No more bee beards." Yes, this is not right. <laughs> not the representative that, of our culture. You know culture. what a bee beard is? Those guys that wear these just giant beards of bees and stand there like morons while bees are. <laughs> Yes, that's like the lawn jockey of right. the old days. Oh, like right. All of these things that you right. can't, yeah. you, shouldn't be done anymore, that's right? Exactly. That was the bee beard parallel. Right. See, I think we can have a lot of fun with this. Well, you never know. It's up to Mr. S, obviously, you know. I is mean, it? Of course. He would just do it if we told him. No. Right? No, he is very particular. and uh, he know he, You know he wants to. It would not be hard. He just wants us to do he the knows, work. He knows the... The impact of this movie, because yes. I always show him t- uh, t- uh, tweets. But if we wrote the episodes and we we got the deal done, and we said, "Look, let us do all the heavy lifting. We'll bring you everything on a silver platter, and then you can make your moves and make your changes." Right. I think we'd have a pretty good shot at, at doing B movie two, this for Quibi. series on for Quibi. Quibi. Yeah, but by the way, could also live on Netflix very easily. 
They they seem well, to like to buy these old properties that that we all love that the nostalgic the full house. The I think Fuller you house. were the one that called me up one day and said to me, "Hey, you see what's going on with B movie? They're <laughs> putting it on T shirts." I bought the T shirt. The people entire script on a T shirt, tattooing it on their backs, yes. like 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 uh, carnival people from the twenties. I bought it and my wife took right. a picture of me and I put it on Twitter. It went it went crazy. It went crazy. Yeah, the entire I mean, script on a shirt. But I I get the sense they were making fun of the movie, which was fine. I don't think so. You go to Amazon, it's like four and a half stars. <laughs> I mean, the people... Rotten Tomatoes is what? It's Out big. What? 15? <laughs> no, no, I'm telling We've you. We've never been bigger. It We've was, never been bigger. <laughs> these, uh, I hate to say, these kids today with their, with their short hair, these <clears> kids <throat> today with their, with their uh, tattoos all over, teardrop tattoos, no, I hate to say that, but the youth, and I mean 20-year-olds, Yes. 22-year-olds, 10-year-olds have taken to this movie <laughs> like some kind of sick drug, like an ecstasy drug yes. that Sammy <laughs> the Rat Gravano sells by the schoolyard. <laughs> taken to this uh, yes. this thing. Just so you don't think I'm kidding, look, there's the picture of B-Movie right the kid there watching it. from my friend. Right. He sent it to me just I did an interview from, from a woman from the UK that talked about what, what is going on with the B-Movie. You know why? I don't know why, why, why. What's happening with it? I just want to get in a room with you guys and write, write again. I think that would be fun. Where it goes, I don't care about. Remember, it. we had that David Attenborough character in there. No, he had the Sahib, the uh, assistant. <laughs> yeah, we had him. He was narrating the whole. Yes, thing. we should do commentary. We should have a. We should have a screening. Why don't we do one of those? A Paley Fest? Yeah, no bigger Hollywood Bowl screenings for B movie. You could do. You could. You could do business <laughs> over there. <laughs> I why like don't we idea. bring what? it there? Why don't we have a big night? Yeah. And why don't we bring on some of the crazy characters and tell baskets. some of these horrible stories that and, are annoying yeah. our car fans right, right now? <laughs> and we're going to talk about the <clears throat> interspecies. Uh... Interspecies sex. Yep. We'll just we'll just let it have, all go. Why don't you have every famous actor that couldn't be in the B movie as a B with their gripes? We yeah. had Jeff Altman in that <clears throat> B movie. He was. Uh, Lee Harvey, I think a Lee Harvey Oswald kind of guy. That... I didn't have a part in the B movie. I was really pissed off about that. There you go. I remember Jerry going, "You've got your own late night show. You don't need to be in it." And um, I was like, "Well, what? What does that mean?" There was no one more fun to be with than Spike, though. When we would stay in the hotel, he would say to me, "You know, uh, my eyes feel like hot copy paper." Yeah, every night I would describe how the uh, Riga Royale. Heating and air duct system yeah. was affecting my body. Yeah. <laughs> I'd wake up in these yeah. sweats, and I would come in and complain mm. that my skin and my eyes were like hot the copy towel? paper. What was I the love towel? this And then man. I would play jokes on I love uh, this man. I, I ended up loving Spike Ferriston because <laughs> we would walk to the uh, Carnegie. We were writing out of the Carnegie, and he would have this fantasy of, of coconut uh, cupcakes every day and spike yeah. keeps in shape i'm the one blowing out of shape over here <clears throat> mm -hmm. and i'm the only one eating the cupcakes and you would buy a box of cupcakes no it was the donut shop there it, it was, was that little that, donut shop frosties they, or whatever the frosties name is. and they had the there. cupcakes yeah they had the big cupcakes i'd get Giant excited cupcakes. about those but i what i loved more was playing pranks on you in the hotel asking you to bring your towels down <laughs> when we first check in yeah sorry sir. i got a uh, thing I here i just need you to bring your towels down to the front desk and we'll give you some new ones you know what and i well, go what down do you to mean? the what? front desk with five towels <laughs> the damp ones too everything sir bring them. <laughs> and then i'd be I'll waiting bring, around the bring, corner bring, bringing my towels down it was fun i got a call here from the hotel security or something and uh, do you know what zuckerman does when we travel together which is quite a bit what he draws little penises at the uh, every elevator there's a little pad of paper and a pen really and he'll draw draw a penis and testicles on it really and it's, then write the network hey, spike. It, hey and, spike on it and then <laughs> and then we and later when we're passing by i say hey check it out there's a message I for you i can't see any problems or, or repercussions from that at all grown man drawing penises in a hotel and this is what else are you supposed to do really it is funny that no one else is taken into custody there. today <laughs> all right well we gotta go guys we've used up all our time there's really? been a lot of fun barry and, Did uh, we get everything in? We got everything in. I'm going to try to figure. It. We're all going to be together soon, um, and we're going to we're going to press Jerry about uh, B movie two. And and for those of you who've enjoyed listening to Barry, you got to see Letters from a Nut now in video form at Comedy Dynamics. Is that ComedyDynamics.com, Barry? How are they going to find this? You can go to Amazon. Okay, it's on Amazon and on. Anywhere in the in the world, this thing is going all over the world. But just go to Amazon and put in letters from a nut to play, 
and you can see that. Or come down and see Mr. Patrick Warburton at the Irvine Improv, May 20. Uh, How May, many shows is he doing? May 500. May 500? <laughs> wow. You guys are going to It's the only way up. to make any money out of this thing. May 10th and 12th. He's doing like five shows at the Irvine Improv, I think, May 10th and uh, 11th and 12th, something like that. I love it. Um, and if you he, like Putty and you like Patrick and he's, you know, uh, he carries the show very nicely. And we can also see uh, stuff at your website, right? Ted L. Nancy. You can go to Ted L. Nancy. Com. Com. All the information is over there. All arrest warrants have been That's taken That's where off. it all is. I'm there right now. Ted L. Nancy. Com. Go there. Check it out. You'll find right. everything you need. Right. Zuckerman, got anything to say before we go? Nada. Nothing. All right. You go guys make have been the great. Money. Barry, thanks for coming in. Thank we'll you, see Spike. you next week on Spike's Car Radio. Quick before we go, 60 seconds. That's exactly how long this commercial lasts. You know what else you can do in about a minute? Get an offer with your car from True Car. That's right. In the amount of time it takes to floss your teeth, pet your dog, do a few sit-ups, just listen to my voice, you can get a true cash offer. Best of all, you can do it from your smartphone or at home. Just go to True Car and simply enter your license plate number and watch how your car's details pop up. Answer a few questions and you'll get an accurate true cash offer from local True Car certified dealer. It's that easy. After that, you can bring your car in and they'll check it out with you together, the two of you. You can even hug if you want. You can ask questions, get the answers you need so there's no surprises, and simply leave your check or trade in your car for a new ride. So when you're ready to experience a new, better way to sell or trade in your car, check out True Car today. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com. Hey, this is Jordan Harbinger, host of the not-so-creatively titled Jordan Harbinger Show. We dig into the superpowers of the world's most interesting thinkers, and then we deliver them to you right into your ears. It's more than just a way to get inspired, and I get it. We're not all superheroes. That's why we give you their blueprint and include worksheets for every episode, as well as answer your listener questions so you can live what you listen. Listen free to the Jordan Harbinger Show, available on Apple Podcasts and PodcastOne.com. You love podcasts, the stories, the laughs, the unexpected turns. But when this episode ends, the silence starts. Not anymore. Audiobooks.com turns that silence into your next great adventure. With over 450,000 titles, from bestsellers to hidden gems, your love for listening just found its new best friend. And because you already know the joy of audio, we're giving you three free audiobooks to start your journey. Imagine your favorite podcast, now with unlimited episodes. That's audiobooks.com. Keep the story going. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. Because for podcast lovers like you, the end of an episode is just the beginning. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E.